So the answer is 0 0.016, which I'll tell you is 1 over 64, which is, of course, 1 eighth times 1 eighth. Now, the hard way to do this problem was is to fill in all the genotypes calculate all the offspring genotypes and work out the proportions. The easy way to do this problem is to say, okay, we only care about the offspring that have little r from both parents and little c from both parents. Using our, punts, our mating square diagram, we can confidently say that the only square that we care about is the one where the little r, little c gametes meet the little, from one parent, meet the little r, little c gametes from the other parent. This is one eighth, this is one eighth, this is a square that's one eighth by one eighth, it's going to be one sixty fourth in size, and it's going to contain the little r, little r, little c, little c offspring. So you can get this number without filling in the rest of the Punnett square. And if you think of that, that will make your life a lot easier. If you don't think of that, you fill in everything, and that will build your skill at thinking about genotypes, so that's useful too. So that the way I drew this median square isn't the only way to draw it. You realize that I, we can make our compartments different sizes, but we can also arrange the compartments in different ways. So I put the 1 8 compartments on the top at the edge, but I could just as easily, as easily have drawn a meeting square like this or like this. They would all have served the purpose just as well. There's no special reason for doing it in any particular way. So what we've done is we've done quite a complex problem. We were dealing with two genes on the same chromosome. They had a crossing over. We had to change our mating square to diagram the cross. We had to take crossing over into account in thinking through to predict the frequencies of the different types of gametes. So this was all using things that we'd done before, except for changing the shape of the mating square, which was something new. And the important message that I want to leave you with is you might think, okay, I've been shown how to do this problem. I'll just memorize this pattern. And then when I see another problem just like this, I'll be able to solve it too. Well, as you'll learn, genetics problems don't really work that way. We, there's no simple rules of procedure. You're going to get different kinds of problems all the time. And each new problem is going to require you to think back to the fundamentals of how meiosis works, how mating works, to predict the outcome. And that's, I think, much more challenging than simply memorizing some simple rules of procedure. So coming up next is the second of our problem. In this problem, we're going to work backwards. We're going to take offspring genotypes, and we're going to infer what the parent genotype must have been. I hope to see you there.